Hello, and welcome to I Know Dino, the, the Big, Big Dinosaur, Dinosaur Podcast, Podcast, where we cover news, interviews, and discussions of all things dinosaur. Hello, and welcome to I Know Dino. I'm Garrett. And I'm Sabrina. And today we'll be talking about Pentaceratops aquilonius and some dinosaur news. So first in the dinosaur news, we have an unfortunate bit of vandalism that went on in Europe at Coy de Nargo in Spain. Basically, there's a site there that's a dig site. It's one of the largest dinosaur egg finds in Europe, but some vandals got in and destroyed a bunch of it. So that's really sad. Apparently, several years ago, someone broke in and stole an egg, but then returned it later and only faced a 90 euro fine. But yeah, it's sad. For people who are nostalgic for the 90s, there was a pretty funny mashup that video that came out this week of um, Earl Sinclair from the TV show Dinosaurs uh, rapping to a notorious B.I.G. song. The creator of the video is Benjamin Roberts, and he apparently spent 30 solo hours editing the video. According to Yahoo, he decided to pick Earl Sinclair because he's just so expressive and a lot of his moves seem to mimic Biggie Smalls. Yeah, when we watched the video it looked like most of the clips of him dancing and things come from the mating ritual episode where he's figuring out his mating dance (laughs) and that works pretty well with the song and it now has over four million views on YouTube so it's getting pretty popular. In England there's an eight-year-old girl who's also a dinosaur enthusiast who has started a campaign against Clark's because the girl shoes that they offer for sale are very flowery and don't have a lot of range, and she wants to see shoes that have dinosaurs and fossils on them. So uh, this online community called Trowel Blazers, which consists of female archaeologists, geologists, and paleontologists, has helped support her campaign, and they've been tweeting on Twitter under the hashtag InMyShoes. Yeah, there was a similar news story a couple weeks ago about two women who had some daughters that were interested in dinosaurs, so they were making them dinosaur dresses because they couldn't find any that were available. So it's kind of nice. It seems like there's a growing community of people who are supporting young girls who are interested in dinosaurs and not just young boys. And of course, our episode wouldn't be complete without some Jurassic Park tidbits. (laughs) Business Insider recently came up with a list of the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park and how the uh, production team made the sounds. So, for example, in the first movie, when the raptors are in the kitchen and barking at each other, those sounds are actually of tortoises mating. The stampede of Gallimimus that the team has to run away from through the large field actually came from a female horse squealing when a male horse got a little bit too close and she got startled. The Brachiosaurus in the movie, where it's moving slow and chomping on leaves and lifting up its legs to reach the higher leaves, the sounds it makes are actually from a donkey. Donkeys apparently have a pitch shift in their vocals and you can slow the sounds down and they got this song-like quality. The most interesting one is definitely the T-Rex, though. The T-Rex was a whole mix of sounds, actually. It was a bit of whale, tiger, alligator, and baby elephant sounds, at least for parts of it. The scene in the movie where the T-Rex kills the lawyer and the sound that it makes is actually Gary Rydstrom's pet. Uh, Gary Rydstrom is the sound designer of the film, and the sound the T-Rex makes at that moment is his pet Jack Russell Terrier, Buster, playing with a chew toy. And one that I actually recognized when I was watching it is the Triceratops, when it's sick from eating all the poisonous food, comes from a bunch of cows. <laughs> and specifically on George Lucas's ranch, which they call which he calls Skywalker Ranch. He has a bunch of cows and he taped them and put them in there. In children's attractions, there's a new addition to the Calgary Zoo where they'll add a prehistoric park and it has some educational features and lots of play area for kids. It's a lot like the park we talked about in the last episode. It's going to have 
16 animatronic dinosaurs that can move their arms, tails, and roar. And then it also has one of those big sand pits with a partially buried fake skeleton for kids to uncover and have the combination of archaeology and sandbox playing. So if you're in Calgary, it might be a fun place to visit. It opens March 19th and closes November 1st of this year. So there's a new discovery in North Carolina, specifically Boone, where Appalachian State University is, and a man named Andrew Heckert discovered a new species of aetosaur. Aetosaurs aren't dinosaurs. They're actually more related to crocodiles, but they, at the time, looked a lot like an ankylosaurus or something similar. They were low to the ground, and they had lots of spikes all over their body, the new species specifically is Gorgetosuchus pecanensis and lived in the Triassic about 280 million years ago. The word gorget comes from the metal neck ring that knights like of the round table kind of knights <laughs> wore around their neck and the succus is Greek for crocodile. So kind of tells you about it. It's interesting because usually North Carolina and the Appalachian Mountains aren't known for their dinosaur discoveries, but they can be found in most states, and specifically the Appalachian Mountains were around at the time of dinosaurs, so there's no reason that they can't be found there. It's really just less common because there's less sedimentary rock and things that would preserve bones commonly. This particular discovery was actually found in an old mine, so it's kind of a cool use for an old mine. You could go in and look for fossils. <laughs> Our dinosaur of the day is Pentaceratops aquilonius, and it lived about 75 million years ago. The species was discovered in 2014 after its fossils were gathering dust in a Canadian museum for over 75 years. Dr. Nick Longrich from the University of Bath in England was the one who realized this was a new species when he was studying them. He saw that Pentaceratops and a second dinosaur now named Cosmoceratops were more similar to dinosaurs from the American Southwest, but originally Pentaceratops was classified as Ankyceratops, and Cosmoceratops was classified as Chasmosaurus. Pentaceratops aquilonius was more like a primitive version of Pentaceratops sternbergi, which was discovered in 1921 in New Mexico. There were a lot of different kinds of Chasmosaurinae a group of large horned dinosaurs with frills, and that's probably because dinosaurs spread out all over the continent and then adapted and evolved into new species once they got there. Competition between these groups would have kept them from moving after they had evolved into their individual niches. Because of all these adaptations, that's why scientists have found so many different species in different habitats. There's at least 10 types of chasmosaurs, and northern and southern chasmosaur species look different. Actually, the way that these dinosaurs were distributed is different from how current mammals are distributed. Dr. Longrich said that mammals tend to be smaller but live in large ranges, but dinosaurs in the Cretaceous tend to be larger and live in smaller re regions. He said this is because mammals may be more intelligent, and quote, they tend to have more flexible behavior and adapt their behavior to their habitats. On the other hand, dinosaurs may have had to adapt themselves physically to survive in a different habitat and evolve new species. Perhaps that's the reason why there are so many species. Pentaceratops aquilonius is small. It's about the size of a buffalo. Scientists think that Pentaceratops aquilonius may have grown larger than a buffalo as it got older if the one in the museum was a juvenile, but they're not sure. Pentaceratops has five horns on its face, thus the penta, and Triceratops has three, thus the tri. Pentaceratops also had a different shaped frill than Triceratops. So we've kind of mentioned this already, but Pentaceratops aquilonius is part of the subfamily Chasmosaurinae, which are ceratopsians. And Chasmosaurs are known for their large brow horns and long frills. Most of them lived in western Canada, western U.S., and northern Mexico. And again, the first Pentaceratops fossils were found in 1921, the Pentaceratops sternbergi. So Pentaceratops lived about 76 to 73 million years ago, which makes it one of the last dinosaurs. And Pentaceratops have been found in the Kirtland Formation in New Mexico and may have stretched all the way up to Alberta. 
a lot of other dinosaurs have been found in the Kirtland Formation, and one of them includes Titanoceratops, which is closely related to Triceratops and Pentaceratops, and is larger. And our fun fact of the day is that Triceratops and Taurosaurus are actually the same species, and since Triceratops was named first, that means that Taurosaurus no longer exists, and it's just Triceratops. They originally thought Triceratops was different because it doesn't have holes in its frill like Taurosaurus does, but they found a transition species in between showing the holes starting to form and realized that they were actually the same species. So it's one less dinosaur. It turns out that Triceratops is the juvenile version of Taurosaurus, but again, as Garrett said, because Triceratops was named first, Taurosaurus no longer exists. And that wraps up this episode of I Know Dino. Our big podcast giveaway ends on March 15th, so hurry up and enter to win. You can go to our website at inodino.com slash podcast giveaway and review our podcast on iTunes, join our mailing list, view our Facebook page, and tweet us or follow us on Twitter at I Know Dino. Prizes include a $50 gift card to iTunes, a free copy of Dr. Anthony J. Martin's book, Dinosaurs Without Bones, and a free copy of the documentary Dinosaur 13. So hurry up and enter. Until next time. Thank you for listening to I Know Dino. If you have any questions or comments about dinosaurs, we'd like to hear from you at plesiosaur at inodino.com. And for more information on dinosaurs, go to inodino.com or follow us on Google, Facebook, Tumblr, or Twitter at inodino.